This is um, video 5 of the grade 12 chapter work energy and power and today we're talking about the work energy theorem. So what is the work energy theorem? Well we'll have to derive it. The derivation is not for, for exams but uh, we need to know where it came from. So let's consider this scenario. We've got a car that's got two forces acting on it, two horizontal forces. We've got the applied force of the engine and friction opposing its motion. And those two forces act along this displacement, delta x. They're acting all the way along there and they're both doing work on the object. And we're going to write an expression for the work energy theorem. So if we look at the diagram, we will realize that uh, possibly the forward force of the engine is bigger than the frictional force. Well, if that's the case, then there's a net force acting on that object. And the net force would be the forward force of the engine minus friction. And that would be an expression for the net force. But we also know from Newton's second law, when a net force acts on an object, it will accelerate. So this car is going to go from some initial velocity to some final velocity. There will be a change in velocity. So if F is bigger than friction, we're going to get an acceleration in the direction of the net force to the right. And uh, the expression for the acceleration is that net force divided by the mass of the car. So if we go to an equation of motion, because this is a straight line motion, we can use an equation of motion. V final squared is V initial squared plus 2A delta X. Because the net force is constant and the acceleration is constant, we can use an equation of motion. So if we substitute this expression for the acceleration into that equation, and we rearrange, if we multiply everything through by a half, to get rid of that to the and if we get rid of this M down here we'd have to multiply all the terms by M Starting to get terms that we should recognize. This looks like a final kinetic energy. The final kinetic energy over here. That would be the initial kinetic energy. This would be the initial kinetic energy over here. And if we continue to rearrange, we get F net multiplied by the displacement is half mvf squared minus a half m v r squared and you'll recognize the right hand side as a change in the kinetic energy of the object and the left hand side is just the work done by the net force so we've derived the equation for the work energy theorem. Um, the work done by a net force is equal to the change in kinetic energy. So whenever a net force acts on an object, its velocity will change because it's accelerating and that's going to result in a change in kinetic energy of that object. So let's go to the statement of the work energy theorem 
and that's on page 28 of our notes so let's go there page 28 of your notes you'll find the statement of the work energy theorem and it says the work done on an object by a net force it has to be a net force we can't just put any old force in there is equal to the change in kinetic energy of that object so here's our equation for the work energy theorem if we go to page 29 we we'll see a few statements here that we need to consider the first one says if positive work is being done on the object by a net force then the kinetic energy of the object will increase. So that's saying that the net force is acting in the direction of the displacement and the object accelerating forwards and uh, its, its velocity is increasing and so its kinetic energy is increasing. Let's consider the next statement. If negative work is done by the net force so here we would have a net force that's opposite to the direction of the displacement then the kinetic energy will decrease so let's have a look at a few scenarios a few pictures of that so here we've got a diagram similar to the one we spoke about earlier we've got a big forward force and a small frictional force so the net force here is in the direction of the motion and this object is obviously going to speed up and its kinetic energy is going to increase so positive work is being done by the net force in the second example we've got an object say moving east at some initial velocity and all the way along some kind of displacement forwards there's going to be a frictional force acting on it because there are no other horizontal forces that becomes the net force because it's the only horizontal force acting on it so that's the net force and will be acting over the entire displacement so this object should because it's moving east and the net force is west it should slow down its acceleration should be west should slow down and we should have a decrease in kinetic energy All right, let's look at an example we're on page 33 of our notes let's go there Question three, and here it is. So let's highlight a few things that we could extract from this question. It's certainly a, a three kg block. We've got its mass. It's moving at seven meters per second over here at that point. And then it moves onto a rough surface. So there's friction around and that's causing a slowing down of the block because of this frictional force of 30 newtons and the block slides two meters under that frictional force and and then there's a ramp after that which we'll deal with later but uh, this is the section we're interested in initially this rough patch over here where friction is going to be opposing the motion of this blocks of this block and we are in A asked to find use the work energy theorem to find the speed of the block or to show that the speed of the block is 3 meters per second right here so it's coming in at 7 we asked to show that its speed there is 3 meters per second so pause the video and try question 3a
Right, now that you've tried the question, we can solve it. And the first thing we need to identify, if we're going to use the work energy theorem, is or are the forces acting on the block. What are the forces acting parallel to the motion? And we've already identified that there's friction opposing its motion. And because that was the only force opposing its motion, it becomes the net force. And that frictional force is 30 newtons. Displacement is to the right. Friction opposes the motion. So we're going to have negative work being done by this net force. So let's uh, show that the final velocity is 3 meters per second just before it gets to the ramp. So we write down, we go to our data sheet and we write down the statement for the work energy theorem. That's how it comes to you on the data sheet. You obviously need to expand the left hand side. The work done by a net force is the net force multiplied by the displacement. And the right hand side is a difference in kinetic energies. It's the final kinetic energy minus the initial kinetic energy. So final kinetic energy subtract from that the initial kinetic energy at the beginning. So let's put our values in. Let's consider to the right to be positive. Then the net force is negative 30 because it's acting to the left. The displacement is a positive 2 meters. On the right hand side we've got a half of the mass and the mass here is 3 kgs. We asked to show that the final velocity is 3 meters per second so we don't really know that one yet. And the initial kinetic energy is half of 3 multiplied by its initial speed which is 7 and square that. Okay, so the left hand side comes out at negative 60. So negative 60 joules of work is being done by that resultant force. And the right hand side, if we work with that, comes out to be 1.5 V final squared minus 73.5 joules. And if you so solve that for V final, it, it uh, comes out at 3 meters per second. Alright, so we've shown that the final velocity is 3 meters per second. And we've seen that the velocity decreases from 7 to, to 3 meters per second. Because the net force is the frictional force and it's slowing the object down it's causing an acceleration to the left and the kinetic energy of the object is decreasing right part b asks us to calculate the distance d that the block slides up the ramp when it comes to rest so pause the video and have a go at that question Okay, so you've had a go at this question. You would have realized that, let's just go to the question, that this ramp is frictionless. So because the block is sliding up a frictionless ramp and there are no other external forces acting on it, or there aren't any, ex well, besides the normal force, which does zero work, there, there are no external forces acting on the block. So if that's the case, we can use the principle of conservation of mechanical energy.
So let's make that statement that the mechanical energy at A, the bottom of the incline, is exactly equal to the mechanical energy at B, where it comes to rest. And I'm sure you've done many of these problems, and we know at the bottom it only has kinetic energy and so a half of the mass times its velocity squared, its speed squared and we know in the previous question we showed that that was 3 meters per second. So that's all the mechanical energy at the bottom. At the top it's going to come to rest so its kinetic energy is zero so it's only going to have gravitational potential energy up here. So that would be mass times 9.8 times the height it reaches, the vertical height. But we asked to find this distance along the ramp, so we're going to have to use trig here to write h in terms of d. So if we use sine of 20 degrees, that's equal to opposite, which is H, over the hypotenuse, which is D. So that makes H equal to D sine 20 degrees. And we can substitute that into H. So the left-hand side on the calculator comes out to be 13.5. And the right-hand side is 3 times 9.8 times d sine 20 degrees. Now we have an equation for d and we can solve for d and d comes out to be 1.34 meters. So this block slides 1.34 meters up the slope before coming to rest.